Okay, so this is experiment, uh, sub-experiment 1.7, and um, I'm going to do a little bit of a summary uh, on, as I explain this sub-experiment, because <clears throat> it's sort of at a juncture. Um, we ended 1.6 with uh, exploring how um, uh, these oscillators, when they emit um, an electromagnetic field out of their pin 3 with with um, these these antennas here, um, that we could sense it with, when we had the Arduino set up for uh, sensing electromagnetic field, and then we were able to visualize that via processing. So that essentially um, uh, documented and explored each of the different s stages of experiment one separately. So in other words, we had the you know the, when I did the cap capacitive sensing using the Arduino. Um, and then I had, um, uh, I also explored the electromagnetic field sensing with, again with the Arduino. Uh, and then uh, had the emitters here, what I call the primary nodes, um, that uh, were outputting an alternating current and um, creating an electromagnetic field. And then explored via a couple of these nodes here. Um, the, the superposition of the field um, and then again as I said ended with processing being able to um, visualize the sensing of that electromagnetic field so those were sort of all all the parts um, and then you could see in, in the sketch um, you know the parts are, are here here and here and then visualize with processing um, over here uh, now we're moving more towards connecting the dots, so to speak. So this experiment is about taking, <coughs> having the capacity to to take the um, the the capacitive sensing um, input into the Arduino, which is um, mapped to zero to um, uh, thousand twenty three, um, and then internally the output pins are actually only capable of, of 255 values. So we need to map the, the 0 to, to 1,023 to 0 to 255, and that's in the Arduino code that uh, will be uploaded. Um, so right now, I'm just, I just finished experimenting with um, uh, just using a potentimeter meter instead of hooking up the capacitive sensing, just because it's, it's more... Um, more reliable, so to speak, at this point. Um, and then what I did was, is because the output uh, of the Arduino isn't actually a voltage value, um, it's a pul uh, it's um, a square wave, and it uses pulse width modulation, uh, which we can then filter to create an analog voltage value. So in other words, we could have this this um, potentimeter. Uh, going from say zero up to 255, which is the sort of the arbitrary abstract value that Arduino will as associate with the 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 um, the square wave, which is again let's see 490 hertz I think yeah, um, being at 100% duty cycle. So the 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 square wave is always at 490 hertz for an Arduino. Um, but then what we can change is the duty cycle. That's essentially pulse width modulation, which is the modulation of a DC value um, with um, I believe, a sawtooth wave. And so what's interesting is that this, this simple first, first order RC filter can then filter out the, um, with this resistor here and this capacitor here, can filter out most of, the, you know, the majority of, of the sawtooth um, signal and leave us with the straight DC value. And uh, I'll zoom in on the oscilloscope so we can actually observe that. Okay, so what we're going to watch now is the uh, vestigial ripple, uh, what's called the ripple, uh, from the first order filter. In other words, the first order filter doesn't filter out all the AC signal, the alternating um, signal. Um, and it leaves a residual filter. What we're looking at now is zero volts because I have zero volts going in. Um, so the, the essentially the square wave that's being output at 490 hertz is is has a duty s cycle of zero percent. Um, but as we change that duty cycle, um, so that 
we begin to make the square wave uh, high more often, we can see a classic ripple. This is a classic ripple. Uh, what's interesting is as we, you know, I'm, I have a voltmeter on the DC level. I'm about 1.4 volts right now. Um, and then here's 2.5, which, you know, is essentially halfway. Um, we have a, a, you know, a little, a vestigial little sawtooth. Um, but what's interesting here is that it isn't, you know, that isn't five volts of sawtooth. That's like, you know, that's like, you know, maybe what, 10 millivolts of, of sawtooth that is just the vestige. So I have, again, over on my voltmeter here, I have 2.5 volts DC reading. Um, and then um, what we're seeing on the oscilloscope is is the, the vestigial ripple at, at at again like 10 millivolts. So you know if your circuit can handle it, which mine can because the next stage will be an op amp, op amp which can definitely handle this amount of ripple, then it's not a problem. But you know s some some applications require um, more filtering, additional stages to re remove the filter. Um, I mean I'm sorry, remove the uh, ripple. And here I am. Um, now this is all the way at 5 volts. Um, actually, technically 4.85 <coughs> volts. And again, this is what this is representing. The reason why there is no ripple here is because we're essentially there's the Arduino is outputting um, a square wave that it's a, is essentially high 100% of the time. So its duty cycle is 100%, and um, therefore uh, there really is no alternating current anymore um, because it's high 100% of the time. So just to show again now backing down classic classic ripple um, then coming halfway 2.5 volts there's a little mini sawtooth and then classic ripple again and back to a duty cycle of zero percent okay now what I've essentially done is <coughs> I've, uh, instead of just reading the output of the first order filter directly, I've plugged the output of the first order filter, which is being powered by, again, the Arduino's pulse uh, square wave um, into uh, my op amp circuit uh, up here, up here. And so um, the op amp then, um, what's nice about the op amp besides amplification is that I can control the limit of amplification. So because the the five five fives in in my um, oscillator circuits that will power what I'll call the what I call the primary nodes, uh, which are essentially you know these antennas here that are creating the electromagnetic field that's then sensed by the EMF sensor, which are the secondary nodes, and then that's visualized by the processing. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, yes, the point. Um, so the I could set the rails of, so it's a single source LM358, and I could set the rails so that they won't um, uh, put too much voltage on the 555 timers. Because, um, again, the 555s vary, you know, 15 to 18 volts max input, and so the one I'm using, I think, is, you know, uh, 16. So I'll max it, I'll max the rail out at, the rail itself will be 15 but I'll only get 14, um, about 14 out of, you know, this. so that'll be my max. So in other words, that max will then correspond to um, the, 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 the abstract, you know, two, 255 coming out of here. So in other words, um, not abstractly, it, it corresponds to a square wave coming out of the Arduino at 100% duty cycle. In other words, it's just at the 4.85 4 volts um, DC value, um, and then and then from there, from that rail. Um, so so again, this this filter filters out the square wave as I discussed before, and then get, it gets amplified. So again, the the max output here is 4.85 volts, and then that get gets put in the op amp um, that will uh, whose gain is oh geez is it four? I think it I think it's around four. Um, so it's multiplying this times four, but again, I've set the rail. So in other words, the power, it's a single source. Um, so I'm inputting, as I said before, like 15 volts. 
so that maxes out the rail so it won't go up to 20 plus volts you know e even though it it could um, if if I set the rail higher um, so let me see if I can show the voltmeter uh, while I while I do this so here's my rail set for the uh, single source LM358 op amp at 15 volts with my power supply zooming out so now with a uh, pulse width modulation with a 0% duty cycle I'm showing a uh, voltage of 0 0.037 but then as I increase the duty cycle the output of the Arduino it's being amplified so here's 11.5 volts and then it taps out at 14.27 again I can keep turning it but you know there's max but um, again the rails uh, set a maximum uh, of 14.26 based on the 15 volts input into the op amp.